I screwed up. Have you ever chased a goal and gone so far off base that your finished product doesn't get the result that you were hoping for? Well, that's exactly what happened to me. Now I'm fortunate enough that I get to do YouTube for a living and I've got you to thank for that. The thing is being located in Windsor, Ontario, there's not exactly a lot of fellow creators around here to bounce ideas off of. That situation has advantages and disadvantages. The advantage being I'm not tempted to copy other people's ideas. The disadvantage being I can be the victim of my own stupidity because I've got nobody around here to say, dude, are you sure that's such a great idea? The same thing happened to George Lucas when he was doing the prequels. He had some really great ideas, but he really needed his friends to tell him, oh, come on, George, that's really fucking stupid. So Rough Guitars reached out to me a while back about building a V and asked what I'd like for a finish, to which I replied, fuck the vino, just don't make it black, as black guitars just really don't show up that well on screen, and I've got way too many of them as it is. So they suggested blue screen blue, like the entire guitar in blue screen blue. And I'm like, okay, that sounds insane. I'm in, let's do it. And so they shipped me one of the finest playing guitars I have ever laid my hands on. And I thought, hey, let's do something hilarious here and have cartoons and images play on the guitar to coincide with whatever song I'm playing at that time. Like Beavis and Butthead, Family Guy, Pink Panther, you get the idea. Now, what I was aiming for was to make this kind of like Brad Pitt in Deadpool 2, where you only see him for like half a second as he flies into some electrical cables. Turns out, that was a really stupid idea. The number one comment on this video was from Popcorn256. The visual effects on this guitar are really cool, but you should stop them when you're starting to do the review. I'd like to see the actual guitar. Cheers, mate. And with 453 likes on that comment, it was obvious that this was the overall sentiment regarding the video. In fact, the negative comments kept coming and coming. And this one from Mr. Welch 2004 really stuck out to me. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. That distracting effect on the guitar wears out as welcome after 10 seconds, but is on almost the whole video. Now, the irony here is that this is exactly what I tell home engineers when it comes to over editing musical performances. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I'd like to thank Mr. Welch for reminding me to listen to my own advice. It's such a fine line between stupid and, and clever. And the other thing I'm always saying is that we're a visual species. We listen with our eyes and not showing the guitar. Well, that wasn't very bright. I work my ass off on these videos and sometimes you get so far up your own ass, you forget that you're trying to make something for other people to enjoy. We've seen it happen in pop culture over and over and over again. Judas Priest did it with Turbo. Metallica did it with everything after the Black Album. And Disney Plus did it with almost every single show they have ever put out. Seriously, the Willow show was so bad, I only lasted two episodes. However, the great thing about doing YouTube is that the feedback is immediate and I'm not working with multi-million dollar production budgets so I can adjust my approach accordingly. I wanna thank you for sticking with me through this and I'll try to do better next time. So by popular demand, here's the Rough V video one more time with the video effects removed. Stick around to the end because the rough guys made a response video to my criticisms and suggestions, and I'm going to include that as well. Roll it. This guitar will crush American builders. America, seriously, what the hell are they building these days? Overpriced guitars or just overpriced crap guitars? A guitar that's made in the USA is guaranteed to be made with American apathy because nothing motivates a worker to build quality like knowing your boss makes 400 times what you make. And while America has been selling out its manufacturing base overseas in the name of never ending profit, the builders overseas are kicking their asses. Not only in terms of build quality, but in design as well. Let's see how badly Rough Guitars from Poland kicks the ever living crap out of the dad rock guitars of America. A little hot. Now, I first encountered Rough Guitars at NAMM of 2022. They didn't have a booth or a display. All they had was a canary yellow prototype in a case. They pulled me aside and asked me to check it out, and I recall thinking, hmm, this is pretty damn cool. 
Now, Rough Guitars gets their name from the composite they build from, Rafane. Now, if you hit up their website, it'll give you the line, it's an innovative composite material scientifically designed to achieve the perfect tone. Perfect tone! Really, guys, when the hell did you start building speakers? Bullshit tone claims aside, there are advantages to building with composites. It's not susceptible to humidity, you're not building from an endangered wood species, and you can build just about any shape you can think of. Now, initially, they were very reluctant to send me this guitar to review because small company, big risk. And that's completely understandable. However, once I explained to them that you can indeed use a guitar in a video more than once, they sent me this Schrodinger. And upon the video release, it was so popular, it crashed their website. And it's been absolutely great to watch this company grow. Their booth at NAND this year was very popular and looked like just about everybody dropped by to check them out. Now, sometime last year, they reached out to me and said, hey, Glenn, we love the first video you did. Can we build you another guitar? What are you looking for? And I give them the same reply I give everybody. Can you make a V? Let's check out what we got. All right, enough of my yakking. Let's see what this thing can do. The fuck? <laughs> yeah. All right, I did that one for everybody who's always wondered why I never do edge of breakup tones, uh, mainly because I don't have much in my repertoire, that's for sure. Remember, I'm an audio engineer first, guitar player second. My job is to get the great performances down on tape, not make the great performances. And uh, yeah, if you're expecting that from me, I hope you have a good spare five to 10 years, because it's just not gonna happen. Anyway, I thought we'd go check out a couple of the different tones. Uh, we only got the one pickup here, but uh, it does have a coil tap and it really does do the edge of breakup thing. Uh, I'll have a cheeseburger, onion rings, and a large orange drink. Does anybody get that reference? If you listen to the Dr. Demento show back in the 80s, you definitely will. Okay, I will say the quilt tap's pretty neat. It does do the country twang thing pretty well. So yeah, if you're into like dating your cousins or driving pickup trucks, this guitar is definitely for you. And it's something that really never ceases to amaze me. All you guys who tune into a metal channel for the clean tones. Sodomy. Seriously though, uh, let's give this thing a real run for its uh, <laughs> Texas money, shall we say. Uh, I'm gonna make a point right here before I get into any more detail. This guitar stays in tune amazing. I've been pretty brutal with it. And uh, just the overall tuning stability is absolutely incredible. Probably the best I've seen outside of an ever-tuned bridge. It's really that impressive, guys. Not bad at all. Great job, Rough Guitars. <laughs> Bobby, can't you get anything right? All right, enough of the clean stuff. I know why you guys tuned in, and that's for Polka. No, seriously, you guys are here for the metal. Uh, so yeah, let's see if we can do the metal. <laughs> Wow, yeah, this really does do the metal. Actually, I'm kind of blown away by the sustain of this guitar. It's uh, rather something else. I mean, like, sure we can do low notes and they'll go on forever. <laughs> Let's 
Like seriously, but we get up here on the on the high notes. You, know, you can hear the gate kick in before the note dies. That's unreal. And yes, it's very easy to squawk this thing too. I'm beyond impressed with the playability of this guitar. The fretboard is just absolutely butter. <laughs> Almost got that one, but it's freaking close. But yeah, it's definitely getting there. Once again, guys, practice makes perfect. I'll keep practicing. Hopefully one day I'll finally get that the way I want to play. But in the meantime, yeah, I think I'm going to be practicing a lot on this thing because it's just so nice. Now, the great thing about doing a composite guitar is not only the sustain and the tuning stabilities, you can do insane customization options. Like exhibit A right here, like, wow. <laughs> you guys are out of your freaking mind. So what do I think about this guitar after having it for about a week? Let's give this guitar the Spectre Sound five star breakdown. For packaging, gotta give it five stars. Now they shipped it in an SKB hard shell V case. Just to be clear, this case here, this retails for 249 bucks, just for the case. Nice job guys, this thing is beyond incredible. There's nothing to complain about. This is just freaking amazing. Setup, five stars. Again, I've got zero complaints. This might be one of the best playing guitars in existence. It is absolute perfection. The action is incredible with absolutely no fret buzz at all. Now, usually there's a bit of a trade-off when it comes to the low action. However, I reached out to the rough guys and asked how the hell they got it so low without any buzz. And they said, it's simple. We made a pact with Satan. Now, bullshit aside, this is the cleanest sounding low action guitar I've ever played. Wow. I hope you other builders are taking note because this is how it's done, people. Components, once again, five stars. It's got a hip shot bridge. It's got hip shot locking tuners. And it's got a DiMarzio X2N pickup, which is apparently the highest output pickup they make. And playing it, it would certainly seem so. This thing has insane amounts of output. Like you could probably skip the overdrive pedal for your tube amp and just use this. However, high output is kind of useless in the studio because it's ridiculously easy to control just how much signal the amp gets in here. I will take issue with DiMarzio's tone chart, however, as this tells us absolutely nothing. Yet it claims reduced treble, but it doesn't tell us what frequency and by how many decibels. This is something that is measurable. And instead of using the same standards that the rest of the world uses, DiMarzio has chosen to give us graphs measured in bullshit. Probably because pickups work on the same principle as a parametric equalizer and only boost at one frequency. And that's usually by three or four decibels. Marketing probably came up with this graph because it looks more convincing. Now, just to be clear here, this is DiMarzio's marketing, not rough guitars. I can't find any faults with any of the components that Ruff chose. Fit and finish, 2.5 stars. Guys, I love your design. I love your take no prisoners approach. However, this guitar does have a serious problem. It's not the fretwork, that's perfect. It's not the body contours. Those are fantastic. It's not the finish itself, it's flawless. Gibson, please call up these guys and maybe you too can learn how to finish a guitar properly. The problem is this. It's got just a tiny bit of neck dive. Now this guitar comes with strap locks for a very good reason, because the guitar will fall off the strap if you don't use them. Now the body contour on the back here puts the strap pin at the wrong angle, and it's extremely easy for the strap to come undone. How do I know this? Because the guitar fell off the strap when I stood up with it for the first time. Yeah, we almost got the world's first headless rough guitar. Fortunately, rough headstocks are made from stronger stuff than Gibson, and there was no damage. Whew. But this got me looking at things. The real culprit here is the body itself. The neck here is wonderful, but it's too heavy compared to the body. I love what they got going on here. There's easy access to the upper frets, but you don't need that access on the lower strings. If you look at any of my other Vs, the strap pin is way further up the neck. Most are somewhere around the 19th to 21st fret. Here, it's at the 24th. Now the placement of that strap pin on a V is critical as it's the fulcrum for how the guitar will balance when standing. I feel you'll have to fight with this guitar when playing it on stage. And the included strap locks are an absolute must install. 
but the pin here is so far back that it will dig into your body if you sit with the strap on. <laughs> now I've got two more issues here. One is the placement of this strap pin because it digs into my leg if I want to sit with it. And the other issue is the placement of the output jack. Because if you don't have a right angled cable, you can't sit with it. Not if you want to plug in the guitar anyway. A recessed jack on the top wing on the back would be a much better designing idea. Now this has to move guys, especially with the price you're charging for this model. Like freaking today. Overall, I'm gonna give this guitar 3.75 stars. This guitar could be complete perfection with a few minor tweaks and one major one. The first thing I'd suggest is adjusting the body shape to a slight offset so the top wing extends to meet the neck somewhere around the 18th or 19th fret. And then I'd get rid of the top contour around the neck joint so the strap pin can sit perpendicular to the player. Given the level of attention to detail that they put into this guitar, I'm kind of surprised that they missed this. Because right now, we've got a guitar you can't sit with or stand with. Not without taking precautions anyway. So if you're interested in getting this guitar, make sure you get a right angle cable or you're gonna be shit out of luck. Now, I really do love this guitar. It plays flawlessly. And the blue screen finish here is just way too much fun. The artwork on the back here is completely insane. And everything about this guitar is just fun. And to me, that's the whole point of playing guitar, is to have fun. Now, it's got a few flaws, but I'm not gonna be too harsh with them because this is their first V. It's not like they've been building them for 66 years and still haven't figured out how to keep the finish from cracking. Be sure to go check them out at Rough Guitars. I'll have a link in the description below. They do custom orders. They've got different models you can choose from, including this absolute incredible V. And don't forget, I've got the Frick IRs up for grabs as well. They're absolutely free. Links in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. And until then, stay punchy yet warm, my friends. Hey Glenn, we watched your movie. Thank you for the review. So we also noticed the problems you mentioned and we already fixed them. So here is the solution just to show you. So first of all, we did a kind of research on the position of the strap locks in here. So we find the position around that spot where you can put the strap lock. Also, we move the, the back one a little bit further so it doesn't bother you with the leg and take a look on this right now. Plus, you have the option to order the flash mounts from the Dunlop that won't bother you at all while sitting. So now you can see that there is no problem with, it stays in place. Also, as of the jack input, every order from now on, we will be mounting two jack inputs. One will be placed here for standing position and the other one will be angled around that place using the fender style uh, jack socket so you will have option for playing both sitting and standing hey guys that's super cool that you're willing to make some adjustments and move the pins around and the output jack and all that stuff thank you so much for that my only question is how do i get those adjustments made to my guitar now